Hello and welcome to our video. We're covering addition and subtraction and we're going to attempt to cover different algorithms that are really useful for both intuition and process um, in these two operations. So we're looking at addition and subtraction and there really are so many wonderful algorithms for each of them and we too often I think get caught up in something that's comfortable for us, an algorithm that works and we stick with it but we need to step back and, and think what other algorithms are there and what advantages do they have uh, that, that help us think about both of these operations. I would say the most, the most typical example uh, in many schools is the stack method. And there are many variations of this method as well. But the stack method uh, is, is a method in which we stack numbers on top of each other, line them up by place value. So if I have 304, Right, I would write that number out, plus 100, say 296, let me write that over here, right? Here I'm writing it out as a sentence, but the stack method says we'll take that and stack the numbers on top of each other. So 304 and then 296. The 2 and 3 are the hundreds place, they line up together. The 9 and 0 are the tens place, and the 6 and 4 are the ones place line them up, put a line here, that represents the equal sign, and then plus, right? And in the stack method, one variation says add up the smallest values first, 6 and 4. Well, that's 10. 10 is 0 ones and 1 10. So we put a 1 here in the tens column. That 1 represents 1 10. 1 10, 0 tens, and 9 tens is 10 tens. 10 tens is 100, right? So we put 0 in the tens place and 1 for 100. 3 and 2 and 1 is 6, but that's really 600, and that's our answer. Another variation of the stack method, right? Same thing, but you, like, you might like this one better. 304 plus 296. Here, when we add them, start at the left first. A major advantage of starting at the left. What is it? Think about it. Well, here, if I start at the left, what am I doing? Well, I'm looking at the largest place value first. In other words, I'm looking at the numbers that impact the answer the most, the hundreds. So I add three and two first, and you could actually write it almost the exact same way, but I typically write it as 500 down here, right? So I know this sum right from the beginning is at least 500, and that's huge. Right? When you're talking about mathematics and you're saying, what's 304 plus 296? Lots of students are stuck because they're trying to think, what's the exact value? But at the very least, if you can instantly process that, that the sum you're looking at is at least 500, you're already better off than you were here when you're adding the smaller values first. So 300 and 200 is 500. Then what? 0, 10s, and 9, 10s is 90. Put that down here. And 6 and 4 is 10. Right? Now we add again. 500, right? Plus 90 plus 100. 90 and 10, that's 100. So we have 500 plus 100. Altogether, that's 600. And I could have added them up here going back to the way I was using the stack method before, but the idea is to start at the left, the largest place value. Um, typically, I think writing the full values down here, right, in this space helps your intuition more than this process here. Stacking with subtraction works in much the same way. Um, typically, again, when we subtract with the, the stacking method, what we do is, at least I guess what I'm taught, usually, what I was taught is to start with the smallest place value first. So if you look at 304 minus 296, with the stacking method, we would stack those numbers up. So we have 304, 296, and what do we do? Well, when we subtract, we have 4 minus 6. Now, typically, we're told, well, you can't take 6 away when you only have 4 ones. So what do you do? You borrow. We would borrow from the tens place. But there are no tens to borrow. So we go to the hundreds place. So now we take one of the hundreds away, right, and we distribute it. How do we distribute it? Well, however we want, but typically the way we do it is to put nine tens. Remember, a hundred is ten tens, so we put nine of them here, 
and one of them here. So all we're doing there is taking the number 100, there were three hundredths, putting 90 in this spot, and then 10 over here in the ones place. And you might see different variations. For example, maybe you would cross this out and put a 14, right? Because 1, 10, and 4 ones makes 14. Now we can solve this problem using this technique. 14 minus 6 is 8, right? 9 minus 9 is 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. The answer is 0, 0, 8, or just 8. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that technique. But again, when we're talking about subtraction and it and you're talking about 304 minus 296, if you don't have any other technique, you're stuck. In fact, you can't even process what we're talking about in class until you compute it. But how do we use other techniques, or at least with even in the stack method, to think about this very quickly? Well, let's write this again. 304, scroll down a little bit, minus 296. One of my favorite variations is, again, to start with the largest place value first. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, we have 300 minus 200. That's 100. And this is, again, valuable because, at the very least, we know that the difference between them, right, when we take this away, we already know that we're losing. Well, how would I think about it? I guess if we're starting at 304 and taking 296, we know already, right, that the difference is less than 100, right? Because you've already lost 200 and there's more to lose. So we've already down to 100 and we're losing more. Take 200 away, what's left? Well, the answer is going to be less than 100. That's the kind of instinct you want to have, which is, oh, 300 minus 200? Well, it's definitely less than 100. What is that? So your brain starts to search for the precise answer, but you've already got a limit on where it could, where it could go. It's got to go below 100. Now what do you do? 0 minus 9. Well, here I encourage you to use negatives, right? 0 minus 9 is, is what? Well, it's negative 90, right? So we put 90 here, but it's negative. And 4 minus 6 is negative 2. And now what do we do? We put all these pieces together. 100 and negative 90 and negative 2, what is that? Well, 100 minus 90 is 10. Minus 2 is 8, the same answer. I think the confusing part is, Oh, what, what, you know, what's going on over here? Why are we adding all of a sudden, right? Well, we add all these parts together because what we just did was split them up by each of their place values, right? So these, each of these differences in place value are being put back together to find the answer. And if you think about the way subtraction works, it makes perfect sense, right? Because when you're subtracting this largest place value, there are 100 apart, the next place value is negative 90 apart, and the next one's negative 2 apart. How apart are all the place values together? Well, just by saying that, you're saying addition. So here we combine them to get 8. So, so what, what would you do if you were given these problems? Well, whether you're using the stack method or not, just to be aware that there are alternatives to think about this is a very powerful step. And I think the last thing I would say really quickly on the stack method, in the next video we'll go on to other methods, I'm already taking too long, is that you can always turn subtraction into addition, right? Think about this for a moment. Any subtraction problem you, you have can be turned into addition. And the basic idea here is that, let's say you have a number, even a simpler number, 5 minus 2, that's equal to 3, but so is what? Well, if you have 5 plus negative 2, you also get 3. So if you're subtracting positive 2, you can turn into adding negative 2. And this, you know, as we move on to other algorithms, is, I think, essential for me when I think about these problems. Going either way, the addition of a negative to a subtraction or vice versa. And there might not be an immediate connection here other than in what we did in this part where we're subtracting and dealing with negatives, and then all of a sudden we have to add them back together. right? But that's the same idea here as well. So 100 minus 90 minus 2 is 8, but I thought of it as addition, and that might have thrown you off. But that's just the way I like to think about these numbers. right? So again, we could have thought of this as 100 minus 90 minus 2 and gotten 8, or we could have thought about it as adding a negative. right? Either way, we get to the same value, which is 8. 
And this interchanging between subtraction and addition will become crucial for other algorithms. So hang in there. We're going to go over some other algorithms in the next couple of videos. I hope you find uh, the variety helpful to think about addition and in your thinking of addition and subtraction. Thanks.